Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello, friends. Thank you for tuning in today and welcome back to episode two of Counting H&M's Money. I waited a week. I read every single one of the thousand comments. Thank you so much for watching and commenting, by the way. And I'm back to incorporate some edits and refine our prediction. So first, I want to address some changes I'm not making because they concern rumors I don't believe or don't believe there's sufficient sufficient evidence to support anyway. If you've got receipts, put the link in the comments. I'm going to go from craziest to most possible, in my opinion. Probably the most outlandish comment I got was that they're not broke because secret wealthy patrons are using them to upset the current world order. I've gotten this comment multiple times across many videos. A lot of people say it's some non-specified members of the World Economic Forum. Many people think it's Again, non-specified members of the Democratic Party of the United States. Some just think it's other celebrities with more money than H&M. In my opinion, absolutely not. There are many Manchurian candidates in this world. They are all smarter, more compliant, more credible, less visible, already better situated than H&M to serve their masters and available rather more cheaply. I don't believe H&M have any backers of any kind. I think they sing for their supper. Rumor number two, no need to account for child care or tuition because the children are fake <laughs> or rented or something. I believe they have two legal children. Egg donors, IVF, surrogacy, moon bumps, and how each may or may not impact the line of succession are all <laughs> topics for a different video. But I believe they have two small children in their house related to at least one of them that they are the legal parents of and financially responsible for. If and when H&M divorce, I believe Megan will make every effort to retain custody of those children in order to get monthly child support commensurate with the lifestyle due the grandchildren of the King of the United Kingdom. Remember when Princess Haya was rewarded a 550 million pound divorce settlement by the UK High Court? Obviously, Sheikh Mohammed is wealthier than King Charles, I think. But part of the reason they were awarded so much money is because, according to Mr. Justice Moore, quote, there is a clear and ever-present risk to these children that is almost certain to persist until they obtain their independence. There will remain a clear and ever-present risk to Princess Haya for the remainder of her life, whether it be from Sheikh Mohammed or just from normal terrorist and other threats. End quote. I think without Harry realizing it, this is what Megan is setting up. Princess Haya's settlement covered the cost of running two multi-million pound properties, one next to Kensington Palace, as well as her main residence in Egham, Surrey, a substantial security budget, holidays, salaries for her staff, accommodation for a nurse and a nanny, armored vehicles for the entire family, the cost of maintaining various ponies and pets, 5.6 million pounds a year to each of her two children, and all secured with a 290 million pound guarantee. In other words, the court will take Sheikh Mohammed's property in the UK to fund Princess Haya's settlement if he makes them. I think this is the kind of divorce settlement Megan was gunning for. I think she had to pop out or pay someone else to pop out DNA children to get it. That's it. I think they have two children. Rumor number three, could Prince Philip have had a little something he socked away slowly over the years and left to the various spares when he passed away? Maybe, but again, I don't think so. Would Queen Elizabeth have left something for Harry? I heard she cut him out of her will after Oprah. I am altering my model based on additional research I've done into Harry's inheritances from his mother and his great-grandmother. But as far as an inheritance from Queen Elizabeth, I think if Princess Anne is controlling any trust funds, they're not for Harry. They're probably for Harry's children because none of this was their fault. 
adult. And it will either be a very elderly Anne or Sarah Chado conveying that inheritance to Archie and Lilibet in 25 or 30 years. Harry won't see any of it. A couple people have written that H&M have a GoFundMe that the sugars pay into for things like birthday gifts for Archie and Lily. Uh, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone is stupid enough to pay into this GoFundMe, I promise you it's not H&M that are getting your money. It's some scammer. Next rumor that H&M lost money in the Silicon Valley bank collapse. I think people are getting confused because the $10 million donation to Archwell came from the Silicon Valley Community Foundation, which has nothing to do with the Silicon Valley bank. I think if these two tone-deaf perma victims lost any money in the the SVB collapse, there would already have been a televised interview about it, complete with tearful pleas to King Charles, begging him to pay at least the security costs for their destitute, helpless babies. Next rumor that they would have gotten sizable lump sums of money as wedding gifts. I don't think so, because when they got married, they were working royals. The assumption wasn't that they needed a gift from Queen Elizabeth to move on with their lives. The assumption was that they'd be on the civil list for the rest of their lives. And therefore, I believe their wedding gifts from Queen Elizabeth and the now King Charles were probably a very expensive honeymoon and a very luxurious grace and favor home. I'm sure Queen Elizabeth threw in some really nice piece of jewelry and King Charles or a valuable painting or two, but I don't think millions of pounds as such changed hands. Okay, so now the edits, let's adjust their net worths before marriage with the new information. So first let's do Megan. A lot of you pointed out that I very likely underestimated her spending. I had her per year beauty spending at 30,000. I bumped it up to 80. I had her wardrobe spend at 120. I'm bumping it up to 200. Her car lease at 10. I'm bumping it up to 15. And I had pricey stuff, candles, computers, perfume, iPhones, what have you, at 10,000 a year, I'm bumping that up to 36,000. I did look into it. Megan earned a total of $7,300,000 in her six seasons on Suits. So her average yearly earnings as an actress were $1,043,000. The LLC she had was a California LLC called Frimfram. So assuming she wrote off literally everything as business expenses after her personal income tax, she would still have around $210,000 a year left over. But a lot of you also pointed out that Megan likely had quite a bit of under the table income before meeting Harry, namely yacht girl income and sugar baby income. Assuming Megan was a middle of the road, high end yacht girl, which is typical for runway models, D-list actresses, she was making $20,000 a night. I'm going to assume Megan only wanted to attend the really classy networking type events. So let's say she spent 10 days in Cannes, five days in Venice. That would net her an extra $300,000 a year. And then there's sugar babying. We know that Megan wasn't available all the time, but we also know she wasn't a college girl. She was a grown-up actress with some cachet and some bargaining power. I'm estimating she got an allowance of around $20,000 a month from John Fitzpatrick or similar. I think a lot of Megan's flying to New York and London and LA to do these fake, lazy appearances at conferences that nobody really attends was <laughs> just a cover, an excuse for Trevor or Corey to cling to while she made some cash in the city. Assuming she did this 10 months out of the year, that would be an extra $200,000 a year. So even accounting for the extra spending, accounting for the extra income, I originally had estimated that Megan entered the marriage with $1.2 million in the bank. Perhaps she entered the marriage with as much as three and a half million in the bank. I don't believe it was the five or six her PR people reported. I think that was Sunshine Sachs in gold digger defense mode, but I think it's totally possible she has a couple million dollars in a Panamanian or Swiss account that nobody knows about. I think before she married Harry, Megan had to ask herself the question, 
how much money should I pretend to have? On one hand, she had to have enough that she didn't look like a shopping addict or a gold digger or a dirty poor. After all, she was telling everyone she was a successful actress sacrificing a successful career. On the other hand, she wouldn't want to reveal any rainy day funds she had for fear of having to sign them over or give them up somehow. So despite my understanding of Megan's pre-Harry finances having improved, I'm actually not going to adjust my figure of 1.2 million because I think that's a respectable number she might have landed on. I mean, she had to have told them something between half a million and a million and a half, I think. On to Harry. A lot of you said I similarly overestimated Harry's net worth before marriage. I did a little digging into exactly what happened with Princess Diana's estate. After inheritance tax, her estate totaled 17 million pounds. 50,000 pounds went to the infamous butler Paul Burrell. 1 million pounds and all of her clothing went into a separate fund and the remaining 16 million was divided between Harry and William equally. So each of them inherited about 8 million pounds from their mother, less than I originally thought. Diana intended for them to have access to the full amount aged 25, but her sister and mother were able to change it so that they had access to earnings at age 25, but no access to the principal until age 30. Of course, Harry gained access to the principal in 2014. As for the Queen Mother's estate, I've also looked into that and worked it out. In 1994, to beat the inheritance taxes, the Queen Mum put £14 million into a trust fund for William and Harry, with £3 million of it earmarked to be available to them when they turned 21, and the remainder available to them when they turned 40. I can't find an exact proportion anywhere. But every single source says that this amount is specific to Harry and William. She put other amounts in other trust funds for her other great-grandchildren. And each source claims that Harry gets the bulk of the money because William is going to be king. What I can't find is the exact proportion of the money Harry is supposed to get. Two-thirds? Three-quarters? Four-fifths? Nine-tenths? I'm not really sure what we're looking at. I'm modeling it as Harry gets three quarters because that sounds reasonable to me. If you know better, let me know in the comments below. Unless Prince Charles was making him pay for his own polo ponies out of mummy's money, Harry really didn't spend anything as a working royal. I doubt he took any interest at all in what was going on with that money as long as it was sitting with royal investors. I'm sure his father made sure it was placed with good people. Could see 100 annual returns have beat inflation by around 5% on average over the last 119 years. Now, invested conservatively with a money manager charging a 1% fee. At his wedding, he should have had around $25,200,000. So I've adjusted that in my model. But what's more interesting is that £1 million plus all of her clothing that Princess Diana put into a separate fund to benefit charities, but also to benefit William and Harry. William is going to be king. He doesn't need to make money off of road showing his mother's clothes from the 80s. Harry is a different story. I don't believe he's above auctioning for profit or selling to museums, even selling his share back to the royal trust so they can be preserved and displayed with other royal garments. I really wonder what will happen with that. So our new post-marriage pre-deal combined net worth is $26,420,000. We know Harry's advance on spare was $20 million. According to those of you who work in publishing, he should be taking home something like 20% of profit after his advance is recouped. So we will account for that later, but we're going to credit him with the $20 million advance. Spotify, I originally credited them with $10 million, half of their deal. I don't see any reason to change that. Likewise, Netflix, I credited them with $40 million, half or a bit less than half of their deal. No reason to believe they didn't get that. It's been reported since as accurate. They also received a gift from Prince Charles. 
for six million. Assuming all of that 76 million was funneled into Delaware corporations and writing off their setup costs in Cali as business expenses. So writing off about a quarter of the value of their house, $300,000 in cars, half a million for attorneys and accounting, 200,000 for initiation fees and clubs that they could say are for business networking, a million and a half in home renovations, again, they can say are for business purposes, and of course, all the salaries of all the people they employ. They set up 11 different LLCs in Delaware for each little branch of their business. So everyone who works on their charity, everyone who works on archetypes, everyone who works in their household, everyone who worked on their Netflix, JR the ghostwriter. I'm going to estimate they paid out five and a half million dollars in salaries. After Delaware corporate income taxes, they're left with just shy of $60 million. I have it at $59,280,000. That's about $18 million less than my previous estimate. As for one-time expenses, I don't believe they could get away with writing off as part of their business. I've budgeted an additional $1.5 million in home renovations. Moreover, I didn't put anything in the budget for art and furniture. They probably spent at least $2 million on that. Also, at some point immediately after they moved to California, they bought Doria a business for $9 million, an elderly care care facility. So all of those I'm deducting from their year zero starting in California personal wealth number. So now let's talk about their income and their spending. First, let's try to get our arms around their annual spending. In my previous model, I assumed they bought their house outright. Apparently not. It's been well reported that Harry put down $5 million and they're paying a $9.5 million mortgage, which works out to $45,000 a month for the next 20 years. I have so much trouble believing this for a couple reasons. Number one, holding a mortgage presumes continuous income. Assuming their mortgage rate is higher than their returns on capital gains, and none of their businesses or other forms of making money work out, they should just pay the house off now. Even if they can't see that and they think they are winners in business and at life, King Charles must be able to see that. And he has the money to buy them this house, even hold a mortgage for them if he <laughs> wants them to prove something to him about financial independence and responsibility. So I'm incorporating the reported figures into my model, but I don't know. I certainly maintain some disbelief there. It's possible they had a mortgage for a couple years and then paid off the house as soon as the royalties from spare came in, for example. The next expense I'm adjusting drastically is Harry's polo spending. Rumor is that Harry has now officially worn out his welcome in terms of borrowing ponies from the club, Nacho, or other players for free. I'm unclear on exactly how much polo Harry is playing. I thought less than usual, but perhaps not. We know Harry doesn't call the paparazzi to photograph him everywhere. Megan does. So maybe we only see him playing when Megan is there in a new Valentino outfit. Anyway, I have it on good authority that there are a couple options for Harry here. Option number one is he bought his own ponies. A high estimate for 20 of the best ponies would be 2 million-ish. A low estimate for four standard ponies would be more like 200,000, but would require him to borrow others from the club. I'm going to estimate he bought eight ponies at $75,000 each at a one-time expense of $600,000. I'm also going to estimate he'll have to do so every five years because that's about how long a polo pony lasts. What happens to polo ponies when they are retired? Are they sold to beginners, children? Do their owners move them to a little happy ranch or stable them at home? And what are the associated costs? Let me know in the comments below. 
Now, what gets really expensive, what makes polo the sport of kings, is maintaining the ponies. If he never hauls them, never flies them, has some sort of special deal with the club, maybe he could get his annual maintenance cost down to about $300,000 a year. But far more likely, he is spending half a million, $600,000 a year just maintaining the ponies. It's possible that he doesn't own a single pony and he only borrows them from the club, but this only presents an upfront cost savings. To continually borrow ponies costs as much as paying for annual maintenance of your own or a bit more. So I'm going to budget in half a million dollars a year for maintenance of the polo ponies increasing by 100000 every five years on the assumption that he is caring for his retired ponies for the rest of their natural lives. Next up, many of you suggested I was underestimating Megan's wardrobe budget. I had it at $300,000 per year, but as many of you have said, Megan will frequently buy a head-to-toe new couture outfit for royal occasions, which even for day wear can cost up to $100,000 each. Generally not, even Dior couture day wear is usually more like thirty or 40000 but Megan has also occasionally bought couture for evening events. I think we've seen Megan at her last royal engagement, and she's already bought about every dumb fake award she can buy, so I just don't see her continuing to buy couture. On the other hand, she thinks nothing of picking herself up a $50,000 bracelet or necklace here or there, which I'm sure she'll continue to do for birthdays and special occasions, so we'll pump up the Megan wardrobe estimate to half a million a year. I also think I underestimated how much Harry's spends on clothes. I budgeted him before at 24000 a year, but he's also had to be decently dressed for several royal events, and I doubt he's shopping at TK Maxx anymore, not because he wouldn't, but because he'd have to drive an hour and a half to find one. He lives in a secluded, wealthy enclave. I haven't been to LA in a million years. I heard Carol and Company closed down, but there has to be a similar spot just average, wealthy, conservative guys go to. People who want casual, made to measure, not flashy, trendy European designer. If you're in LA, let me know in the comments below. Where do you think Harry is shopping? How much do you think he's spending? Anyway, considering a decent suit alone, is $5,000, I'm going to up my annual estimate on that to $48,000 a year. Many of you suggested I was greatly underestimating the amount Megan spends on cosmetic treatments, and I tend to agree. I had it budgeted at $30,000 a year, but going through the extensive list of beauty treatments, I believe she has regularly from injectables to hair extensions to thread lifts, and more importantly, no Knowing that she's going to the top people in LA for all of this stuff, I think a more realistic estimate is $150,000 a year or perhaps even more. After all, she's spending $20,000 a year on Ozempic alone. Plus, we know Megan is a fan of not only the effective stuff, but spa weekends with massage, lymphatic drainage, facials. Actually, I'm going to bump this up to $200,000 a year. Speaking of spa weekends, I think H&M are spending around $120,000 a year on vacations from each other, so I'll add that in. Also, although they won't be requiring the people working for Archwell Audio and Archwell Productions for much longer, at this point they're still doubtless salarying people at their various companies at around $2 million a year. I'm going to model that as continuing for the first five years they're in California and and then halved to 1 million for the next five, and then halved to half a million just for legal accounting and household employees after that. Because let's be serious, they aren't going to complete the deals they have and they aren't going to get more deals. So their employee costs will go down. Speaking of employees, 
What do you think Doria gets paid? Do you think it's ad hoc? Like she has a cottage on their land. They bought her a car and a business and handed her a credit card with a really high limit just so she doesn't have to think about money anymore. Or do you think she gets a formal amount like 10 or 20,000 a month? Megan loves to talk about unpaid female labor. So I'm sure she's convinced Harry to pay her mother handsomely for her granny duties, building up a little nest egg for both of them post-divorce. I'm going to put Doria's allowance at 180000 a year. Another interesting question is, how much are Megan's awards costing her? I'm going to conservatively put this at a million dollars a year. I'm thinking each award costs her around $200,000 and she gets about five fake awards a year. In truth, I think it varies greatly. For example, her NAACP award was a million dollars up front and around $150,000 a year every year thereafter. So quite the financial commitment. Whereas Gloria Steinem's Woman of Who cares award. <laughs> Megan probably paid $100,000 and gave Gloria a month-long guest pass at her acupuncturist or whatever. If you have more concrete ideas about this, by all means, put them in the comments below. Finally, my two biggest misses, drugs and quacks. First, the drugs. I don't believe they're cokeheads as many have <laughs> offered. I do think they spend around $1,000 a month on weed and about $300,000 a year on luxury ayahuasca and magic mushroom retreats. As for quacks, remember when we uncovered that Megan was seeing a $3,000 an hour life coach? I'll link to that video in the cards above. I don't think it would be any exaggeration to estimate that they spend $25,000 a month on gurus. I actually believe that Megan has more or less denied Harry proper psychiatric care and steered him towards new age quacks that will basically tow her line for bribes. I think the people she hires are active participants in manipulating Harry, specifically in manipulating him to earn more and to convert as much as possible of his personal property and their community property into Megan's private property. I think she keeps him high and confused to soak him. There's really no nice way to say it. So I'm budgeting in a quackery space spend of 300,000 a year. In the last video, I estimated that they're spending around a million dollars a year on private jets. And a lot of people told me, no, 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 Megan is infamous for exhausting the generosity of rich acquaintances by quote unquote, borrowing their private jets. Rich people might let them use their private jet as a guest to visit them once in an emergency, once as a favor, but that's it. If they continue to fly private as they do, I have no doubt that friends like Elton John and Tyler Perry will let them use their PJs to party with them in Ibiza, but not for private separate use, at least not repeatedly. I'm not entirely convinced I was wrong on this, but as a compromise, I will knock down my estimate to half a million a year on private jets. So my new refined estimate of their annual spending is 8 million 600,000 ish dollars around 1.4 million per year higher than I estimated in the last video. Also impacting their income is a structural change. I modeled them paying half a percent per year to a money manager, but have been told 1% is more realistic for their wealth level. So now let's talk about additional income I forgot to include in the last video. First, let's talk about royalties on spare. The publisher said that they'd have to sell 850,000 copies to recoup Harry's advance. They sold 1,430,000 copies. The writers who commented here said that as a celebrity author, he'd probably get 20% royalties beyond his advance. 
So that works out to an additional $2,320,000 for Harry. Then there's his salaried big boy job at BetterUp. Apparently, normal non-famous people who perform this role typically make just under $200,000 a year. So I'm guessing they're paying Harry $400,000 a year. Honestly, it might be quite a bit more. It might be half a million. It might be a million, two million. It's hard to say because the value of a corporate spokesperson varies so widely and Harry's personal value is unproven. I think I'm going to be conservative in saying that they're paying him only half a million a year, but I'm going to be generous in saying they're going to let him keep this job for the next 10 years. It's entirely possible they've been paying him two million a year, but plan on firing him tomorrow. It's also possible they don't pay him anything, but he has a stake in the company. I don't know. Same as last time, I've deducted five million from their wealth for random investments. Another source of income might be from Megan, affiliate marketing slash down low promos. So back grid paparazzi photos, Megan's mirror, all that kind of stuff. Again, I'm going to be pretty conservative because they haven't switched into high gear with this. Megan hasn't restarted her blog. They're not on Instagram. Dior has denied working with them. So I'm going to estimate this revenue stream as bringing in 200,000 per year. This could all change really quickly. They could make millions if they switch this into high gear, but I don't think they're there yet. Finally, corporate speeches. The going rate for people at their level of fame is half a million a speech. We don't hear much about it and Harry didn't exactly prove his chops at the UN so I'm going to say he only makes a million dollars a year this way. As for Megan, I don't think anyone is paying to hear her speeches. So how does this new model shake out? It illustrates much more dire straits than last time. In this model, if it weren't for the $35.5 million inheritance from the queen mum that should come to Harry next year. They would have their wealth in under five years and be bankrupt in year seven if they continue spending as they do. With that injection of cash from the queen mum, they aren't due to become bankrupt until 2032. So I really see next year, the year Harry gets that money, as the right time to turn this thing around. Yes, we want them to shut up, but also the smartest thing for them to do for their own financial survival would be to pivot into privacy. We know they have trouble earning. They have trouble keeping promises. They have trouble not breaching contracts. As I said last time, probably the market will perform better than what I've estimated. Maybe they'll get a little bit more of their Netflix money or have another successful book and another successful book after that. You never know. But at this point, shutting up shop is actually the best business decision they could make. If they're salarying all these people, spending all this money on private jets and outfits and awards and PR and security and suing everyone in the universe and they're still not making money out of their businesses, it's time to cut their losses. If they cut those expenses, they should be able to slowly grow their wealth rather than blow through it like madmen, even with Megan spending on plastic surgery and Harry spending on polo. The question becomes, will their egos allow them to do that? Or one day, six years from now, will Harry wake up, get high, realize sometime in the afternoon that Megan and the children are gone, and she doesn't show up for their joint life coaching session, look at his phone to see a thousand Google alerts that she's left him <laughs> and blasted it all over the tabloids and opened up an Instagram to earn money without him because she'll still have the kids and whatever settlement she can squeeze out of Charles. She'll still have the lucrative business or businesses she bought Doria. She'll still have the house. She'll still have her Swiss bank account she never told him about in the first place. And she'll still have that title, former Duchess of Sussex, and no one can take that away from her as long as she uses former. And if she does all this in the next five years, she might even be able to snag a new rich idiot that'll be that. He'll have around $10 million, no support network, and a broken heart, unless she decides to leave him in year eight instead of year six. In that case, he'll just be flat broke. What do you think? 
Are they going to make this work or is the writing on the wall? Let me know in the comments below. Toodles. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>